Hey guys, it's me, Con from CIR Inventions, and you might be wondering, where am I? Well, this is downstairs. It's still in my house. I didn't go anywhere, which is good because we're in quarantine. But today's video, I just want to go over something that may be useful to some of you, including my friends who are also on the channel. It is a shotcut tutorial. Now, what is shotcut? Well, if you search this video up, you probably already know, but it's a free video editor that you can download for Windows and Mac and probably some other stuff, but I'm not sure about that at the moment. So let's just get started. I've been using Shotcut for over two years now for editing my videos, so I feel like I'm a good enough teacher, at least. And um, first, if you want to download Shotcut, you're going to have to go to the website. Oh my god, it's right here. That's crazy, guys. The website's already here. Well, if you want to download it, there's a big red click to download button, but nobody cares about that. Let's go to the editor. Now, while we're waiting for the editor to load up, I'd like to ask you guys to subscribe to this channel. That would be highly appreciated. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers and I really hope this tutorial helps you, but I also hope that you'll subscribe because that'd be really nice for me. Back at it again at the computer. Here we are. Now, if you're wondering about Shotcut, it's very simple to use. That's what I really like about it. It's very simple and I think it's very nice that it's free because if it wasn't free, it wouldn't even be worth it if you asked me. So let's get started. First of all, let's just get into some of the stuff. If you used it for a while, uh, you'll see these things here. You have recent projects, which is basically stuff you've done recently. So these are some of my recent videos that I've edited. You guys have probably already seen them. Here you can get new projects. You don't really need to worry about this most of the time. But the first place we're going to go is to open file, and then we're going to select some videos. So I'm just going to select these five video clips. These were from my last video. If you want to go check it out, I'll put it up in the corner. Whenever this pops up, convert to edit friendly, it basically wants to change your file type because I record on my phone and it has what is called a variable frame rate. Now this variable frame rate is basically, it doesn't record at 30 FPS all the time. Sometimes it's at 29, sometimes it's at 30. It could be more or less. Don't worry about this. You can just press cancel and you can edit it just fine. One thing you can do, it's kind of convenient, is you can move this little bar up and down so you can make your timelines and tracks bigger or you can make the actual screen up here bigger or smaller. It's pretty simple, but very useful. All right, let's just select this clip right here. Oh, and before I forget, always have headphones on when editing. I don't know how I almost forgot that. Yeah, I'm pretty stupid sometimes, I know. Now that we have a video clip, let's just play it. Sorry to interrupt this video. Hey guys, it's me, Future Colin from... This was in my last video, like I said earlier. Well, if I want to trim off the beginning of that, I can just grab this little arrow on the side here and trim it to where I want to start. So let's just start it there. And if I want to trim where it ends, you can do the same thing on the other side. So I want to end it right... There, why not? Now that you have this video clip that's trimmed on the beginning and the end, you can drag it into your project. Sorry to interrupt this video. Hey guys, it's me. Give it a second, it'll load up. One day. And now you have a video clip. Yay, you, you're video editing. So basically, what you do is you have your video clip here. And this is video track one. This is your master. So basically, this is the most important one. This is where most of your videos are going to be. If you want to add more, you can add an audio track. Say, like, if you want to add background music or sound effects. And of course, you can add more video tracks, as many as you need. We, we won't need four. And if you want to delete them because you added too many, you can just remove them. I'm going to keep two. I usually have, usually with my videos, I have two video tracks and an audio track. So like one of them will be for background music, and then I'll have two video tracks so I can layer some pictures on top of each other. Pretty simple stuff. Over here is the playlist. This is where you'll find all your video clips, like the five that I dragged in has them numbered right here. If you want to add more tracks, you can just take a clip like this one. This No, that's the same clip. Take a clip like this one, and you, know, you can trim it. Let's say we want to start it there and end it here. It doesn't really matter right now. I'm just trimming stuff, for example. What you can do is you get it, you just drag it into the project. You'll see this little white area. That's where your track is going to land. It says overwrite for a reason. You don't want to overwrite what you already have. You just want to overwrite what's necessary. So I'm going to put it and it'll just snap into place on the end of this. Now, if I wanted to overwrite some of it, I could just do that and it would delete all of the stuff that's in white or the stuff that's underneath the white would just go away. But I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to put it here. And there we go. Now we have multiple video clips. You can scrub through your footage just by dragging your cursor back and forth. Pretty simple. You make it go slow motion, listen to sounds. Okay, now for the most important thing in video editing, honestly, in my opinion, 
It's cutting up your videos. You have something in the middle of the video that you don't want to actually be there. You can just cut it out. Also known as a jump cut. So basically what you can do, say I want to cut out this part right here. We can right click and press split it playhead. And boom, now your clip is here. Now it's just a segment of your original clip. So what I can do is I can remove it, which does this. So what happened was it got rid of the clip, obviously, but it also moved this track to the front. Now I'm going to undo that because I want to show you something else you can do. You can also press lift. And what that does is it leaves a gap of no video, which is nice if you're just trying to remove a little bit of audio or something that's in the way. Both are good. And of course, if you accidentally press lift, you can just go to remove and it'll get rid of that yellow section of nothingness. All right, let's get on to the fun stuff in Shotcut. Now, it may not be quite as versatile as HitFilm when it comes to this feature, but it has plenty of filters that let you edit your videos. So, let's go up here. O up here, it says Filters. So, you click on a track that you want to edit in some way, and you click on Filters. And then you press this plus button, and there's all sorts of filters. It starts with your favorites. There's a bunch of default favorites. Some of them I still have. Some of them I just haven't gotten rid of. But most of these I use every now and then, at least. There's also the video all of the video settings and all of the audio settings. Now I'm gonna, not going to go over all of these since this is a beginner tutorial and I feel like you will almost never use some of them. So let's say we want to add some brightness to this video for some reason, even though it's already kind of bright. Well, we can just click on brightness, add it, and then change it. So now my video clip is impossible to see and looks terrible. Or we can turn it all the way down and just make my video clip black for some reason. Now if you don't want this preset, you can just press the minus button. Let's go back into the presets. What else do we have? Well, some of my personal favorites, we have fade out audio, where basically, as you can see, there's this little black shadow that comes at the end of my track. So what you can do, you can grab this little dot, you can make the fade out take longer or shorter. So what this does, let's just play the video and you'll see what it does. This one looks a lot better than the gray and green, honestly. So basically what it does is it slowly turns to black, the video. Now, obviously I wouldn't do that right here. I usually do this in like the outros or something. It's a pretty useful feature and it's a good way to close out a video if you want to. Another thing to know about the fade out audio feature is you can get rid of the fade out video or the fade out audio or keep one or the other, just in case you don't want to actually fade out the video or fade out the audio. All right, let's go into a few more features that I like to use. Gain volume. So I'm gonna let you listen to the clip for a couple seconds. That's pretty cool, I like it. You hear that? It's kind of quiet. So what I can do is I can click on this and make it five decibels louder. Now decibels is just a way to measure sound. So by adding more decibels, it'll be louder. Uh, it's pretty cool. I like it. Now, as you can tell, that video clip is louder and it applied that, it applied that boost in sound to the whole clip. So now this whole clip is slightly louder than before. Of course, I can make it much louder. Again, so it never breaks again. Uh, it's pretty cool. I yeah, I would never make it that loud. Or you can make it so quiet to the point where you can't hear any of it. Also kind of useless. But you can play with it in between. So us I usually like to go 5 decibels since my audio quality is fine, but it's usually just not loud enough. So I usually just add a few decibels to every clip. So, and then I think the... No, there's two more that I want to go over in filters. We have size and position. Basically, this is how you can zoom in on stuff. You just take these corners and you drag them around. Or you can zoom out, zoom in, do whatever you want. And of course, you can just move your video across the screen however you want. So I'm just going to leave it there for now. That's fine. So now that we have my size and position all done, because I would totally do that, let's add another one. And the last one I want to go over for now is text. So you can just add any text that you want. So let's just add some text. All right, I think that's that's pretty important text and you should totally do what it says, but that's not the point right now. So you can type in whatever, I totally spelled inventions wrong, didn't I? All right, now that we actually fixed my spelling and did it correctly, we can edit this text. So what we can do is we can go to, you can change your font. So the, if you're wondering the font that I like, we can go to Sego UI Semibold. That's my favorite font. It's the one that I use. It's very simple and but very nice. You can change the color of the font. So if I want my text to be black, you can add an outline in whatever color you want. And then if you want to make the outline bigger, you just click on the arrow or you can manually change it here. 
You can also add padding, but I don't find that very useful. You can also add a background, but I've never really done that before. It's just sort of here, if you ask me. And then, of course, you can change where your text fits on the screen. Center left, center top, you know, whatever you want to do with it. I usually just leave it center bottom. That's where most of my text goes, but sometimes I'll change it to a different position. And one more filter I would like to go over. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really display it very well, but if we take a short search, chroma key. Now, you might be wondering, what is chroma key? Well, chroma key is green screen. So if you ever want to have a green screen in your videos, this is where you would do it in Shotcut. So I'm just going to pick some random color and see if it works. Uh, and there, there's one other thing you need to know about chroma key. We need to add another image. So I'm just going to go to my image folder over here. Just go to pictures. Just, we're just pick some, uh, let's just pick this Ender 3 nozzle. I don't know why, but we're just going to put it in there. We can drag and drop it wherever we want it to be. And I'm chroma keying, so this is going to look very, very weird. <laughs> now this looks terrible. Obviously, I'm not going to keep this in a video. It looks like the spawn of Satan at the moment. Now, if we're going to actually chroma key, we need to add another video track and move this up here. So uh, considering I don't have a green screen, this looks terrible. But if I had a green screen, I would show you guys in a little more detail how this works. But I do not have a green screen, so this is kind of the best I can do. Chroma keying, basically, they're the simple one, at least, takes out a color that you pick and it just gets rid of it and switches it with whatever you have below it. So chroma keying doesn't really work very well if you don't have anything below it, but if you do, then it works fine. As you can see where I selected the, I believe white, did I select? Yeah, I selected white. You can see my poster in the background is white. So it changed to be the image, which looks pretty terrible if I'm going to be honest, but it's fine. I'm not actually trying to use a green screen right now. So I'm just going to get rid of this image and get rid of the chroma key. So those are all the filters I wanted to go over, but um, there's plenty more. You can experiment with them however you want. But those are the ones that I use and even one that I haven't really used much yet, but I hope to use a lot in the future. Now that you have been working with your masterpiece for a while, you don't want it to be deleted for some random reason. Because if you got your video deleted, that would really suck, wouldn't it? So um, let's learn how to save. It's, it's really simple. You just go up here where you have the open file and you click save. Now this is the first time I'm saving this project. So it's gonna take me to whatever folder I've already selected. This is just my video folder for all of my MLT files, which I should go over for just a second here. MLT files is basically the file that Shotcut creates. If you want to re, if you are editing your video and you want to reopen it, it's basically if you open up an MLT file, it'll bring up your old timeline if say you didn't finish editing. So you can name this whatever you want. Of course, I'm not going to save it. It's kind of necessary for me to save it right now since this is just a tutorial. So I'm just going to cancel that. But if I want to save it, you can name it whatever you want and it becomes an MLT file. But since my masterpiece is fully complete, let's go to the export. Export is also on this top bar of lots of stuff to do. If you want to export a file, you select whatever resolution you want. There's plenty of them to look over here. Like for me, I just have, I believe it's 1080 29.97 FPS. If you're wondering what 29.97 FPS is, that's the variable frame rate I was talking about earlier in the video. And then you would just click export file, and then you would save it in whatever your video folder is. This is my video folder. There's a lot of videos in here, which you should definitely go watch. And I can name it whatever I want. I can name it that if I want it, but of course I'm not going to actually save it because I don't want it. Whenever you do export though, well, may as well save it just to show that off. All right, we have our folder save, and now it's exporting. You'll see that a, the job section appears and it's starting the export. Now I don't actually want this so I'm just gonna right click and press stop this job and it, it'll stop. Oh and one more thing I forgot to go over. Let's go over properties real fast. If we select a track and go to properties we can change some of the aspects about it. We can change the aspect ratio which basically will squish my footage and make it look terrible so I'm not actually gonna do that but it's something you can do. You can change the speed, so if I want to double the speed, I could go two times speed. And now my video is faster and a lot shorter. My voice is a lot more high pitched and it sounds terrible. But that's okay. You can also change the duration, but I feel like the speed is going to be a lot more useful for you most of the time. But that's basically what's in the properties bar. I figured I would show you. And of course, if you mess up, you can just press reset. So there you go. That's This is my basic shotcut tutorial. If you want to see me do more tutorials or maybe a couple more advanced things, 
or maybe I'd do like five things I learned while video editing or something. Be sure to subscribe, comment that below, and yeah. I'm Callum from CIR Inventions, and thank you for watching my tutorial. If you want to subscribe, please do so, and I will see you guys in the next video.